For this last example, we're asked to integrate cotangent x times the square root of 1 minus sine squared x dx. There's a couple different ways you can approach this. They do all come to the same answer in the end. I'm going to use some trig identities. I find that that's probably the easiest way to work this type of problem. So you may or may not recognize um, inside the radical here, 1 minus sine squared x, that's equal to cosine squared x. So maybe the most famous of the trig identities is this one, sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So if I were to take that sine squared x to the other side, I'd have 1 minus sine squared x, which is what I have here, which is equal to cosine squared x. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. So then I have cotangent x times the square root of cosine squared x dx. Well, when I take the square root of cosine squared, I'm just left with a cosine. So I've got cotangent x times cosine x dx. What I am now going to do is I'm going to rewrite cotangent x as cosine x over sine x. And that's times cosine x dx. Then I'm going to multiply. So I get cosine squared x over sine x dx. Now, using that exact same trig identity up here, I can rewrite the cosine squared x as 1 minus sine squared x. And then I can write this as two separate fractions. So this is the same thing as having 1 over sine x dx minus sine squared over sine is just sine x dx. Now, the second one is very easy to integrate. When we integrate sine x, we get negative cosine x, so that part's easy. Um, the left one, 1 over sine x, well, that's the same thing as just cosecant x. So we're going to integrate cosecant x dx. And here, when we integrate sine x, we get negative cosine x. So that part's done. I'll go ahead and put my plus c out there. So integrating cosecant x. That one is not just an easy one to integrate, but we do have a formula here. Oops, scrolling on the wrong side of my screen. If we look at number 96, we've got uh, a formula for this. So cosecant ax dx. So in this case, our a is going to be 1. So we're using number 96 with a equals 1. So using that formula, we get negative 1 over a. So negative 1 over 1 is just negative 1. So we get negative, then the natural log of cosecant ax, cosecant 1x, so that's just cosecant x, plus cotangent ax, again, just cotangent x. The double negatives here make a plus cosine x plus c. And this one, ooh, sorry, that's a little messy. Uh, but this one is done. If you wanted to, you could rewrite this in terms of sines and cosines, uh, but you don't have to. You can leave it just like this and it is finished.